right, let's do it. <clears throat> Title of this lesson is Woe Unto the Nations. And we're going to go ahead and dive into it. No need to make this long, but I do want to hit the key points. Vocab Malone is still trying to push an outdated, expired doctrine that all nations are going to get salvation. That doctrine expired about 20 years ago. Nevertheless, we're going to visit it and address some key flaws and holes in that doctrine. <clears throat> Shalom, Barak Tagehawa. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Shabbat Shalom on this beautiful day of atonement. And just a reminder to the brotherhood to reflect on the sacrifices that Yahweh Shai made for the house of Israel and to remember the sacrifices of our fathers so that we would have a way back to the covenant through the mercy seat, Yahweh Shai. Time to reflect on ourselves and examining ourselves <laughs> whether we be in the faith, a hard look in the mirror. Our biggest enemy is our own selves. So this is a time to forgive those that trespass against us as we seek for forgiveness for our own trespasses. So without further ado, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and dive into the lesson. Once again, Shabbat Shalom. So Vokab Malone is teaching that all nations are going to get salvation. There is no such thing as a kingdom where everybody is on an equal or level playing field. That's not realistic. That's not reality. So the kingdom of heaven is a government. It is an orderly arrangement of the tabernacles of David, thrones of rulership. So the kingdom of heaven is not fantasy world or floating on a magic carpet somewhere, <coughs> waiting to drop dead in order to enjoy the pleasures of rulership of being in heaven. Matter of fact, I'm going to go here to the book of Psalms, chapter 122. The book of Psalms, chapter 122. Let's go here to verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. So the Lord is building his temple. He's going to avenge his holy temple, which are a people. So we're reading about the lively stones spoken of in 1 Peter chapter 2. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, 
of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. So the leaders are being brought back together. Gather unto me the tribes of Jacob and possess them as in the days of old. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. So the salvation is what we just read, the rebuilding of the house of the Lord. Jerusalem is being rebuilt. The city of David is being reconstructed from its ruins. So the Lord is establishing thrones of rulership under the tabernacles of David. Brother Gabar Adama, 2 Timothy 2 or 6. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. So the first fruits that are going to be gathered are the elect, and that who ha that is who has access to this understanding and the rebuilding of the Lord's temple built on the chief cornerstone, the root and offspring of David. For the Gabar Adama, 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. Remember that Yahalashai of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So everything is a stem off the vine, the branch, the root and offspring of David. Yahalashai Hamashiach the chief cornerstone that's pouring out his waters, replenishing the dry bones upon the house of David. So the Lord is extending his tender mercies upon the house of David. Ruins, dry bones, a graveyard. So the spirits of the prophets are coming out of the graves. When Yahawashai was crucified, remember, the graves opened up. Israelites that had supposedly died were walking through the streets. So the Lord is resurrecting his throne, his temple. Brother Andre served Yahawashai, Shalom Barakatah. Amos 9, verse 11. In that day, Will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. And I will build it as in the days of old. See, let's go back to Psalms 122. Verse 3. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. So kings are being stood up and are going to be crowned at the return of Yahushua. Judges are being resurrected. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. So the Lord is only dealing with his inner courtyard. His elect, the lively stones of the house of Jerusalem. A new Jerusalem is being built back better 
that this is the real Build Back Better plan. Under Yahweh Bashem Yahweh a new Jerusalem is to build back better. Pillars of Benjamin, Lamentations 5, verse 21. Un Lamentations 5 and 21. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. So what has been will be again. The Lord is rebuilding his house. It is the vengeance of the Lord's temple, which comes with the destruction of the heathen and recompense unto the nations. Let's go here to Judith. If I'm not mistaken, Judith was praying against the ancient Assyrians. Judith 16 or 17. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. The Lord Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment in putting fire and worms in their flesh and they shall fill them and weep forever. So these Assyrians are bad. The ancient Babylonians are bad. The ancient Edomites are bad. Yes, it was to the ancient Assyrians, but they're bad amongst peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues under the dawn of Babylon and the revised Roman Empire. The great red dragon, the European Union is the head and the horns are NATO. With America, the daughter of Babylon, riding that great beast. So these nations are back to receive their judgment. Judith 16, verse 17. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred, the Lord Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment in putting fire and worms in their flesh and they shall fill them and weep forever. So how are the nations being saved? When we just read, they're going to be judged in the day of judgment, in the day of the Lord. How are the nations getting salvation? Wow. That's a cut right there. Matthew 10, verse 17. So we're reading about judgment, recompense, payback, the big payback to the heathen and Gentile nations, but salvation and redemption to the Israelites, elect. Matthew 10, verse 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. What men? Let's see. Matthew 10 and 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Prophesy against Mount Seir. So how are they getting deliverance? Salvation. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a student. I'm just a student trying to learn. Brother Gabar Adama. Jeremiah 29, verse 12, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Evil means bad times. Jeremiah 29, verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search 
for me with all your heart. The elect is searching the Lord in these last days and seeking him in truth and sincerity. Jeremiah 29, verse 14. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. So the elect of Israel is promised deliverance, salvation, but severe judgment and punishment to the nations. It's clear. Matthew 10, verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles prophesy against Mount Seir. That is who is ruling over all the nations. America, the European Union, and NATO, which is the daughter of Babylon, riding that beast, the great red dragon, a global enterprise leading the United Nations. See, we're going to go to Matthew 10. Verse 5. So how in the world can all nations get salvation and judgment at the same time? Too many holes in the caveman's doctrine. Matthew 10, verse 5. These 12, these 12, Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Salvation to the elect of Israel, judgment to the nations, Mount Seir, we're in the last kingdom, the last leg, of the revised Roman Empire, pursuant to Daniel chapter 2, verses 43 and 44. Let's go here. So the Lord is gathering the tribes of Jacob, rebuilding the house of Israel, gathering the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, two sticks are going to be made one stick in the hand of the Lord. Yahweh Shai that's going to occupy the throne of his father. <coughs> Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Old Cat Malone has a swollen eye, a bloody nose, and a swollen eye. And one eye is shut closed completely. We're going to read it again. For the slow at heart, or the mentally slow, spiritually. Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Therefore, Thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Edom, Idumia, Mount Seir, the so-called white man, against them that are ruling over the heathen in the last days. Babylon the Great, the great red dragon, and against the Gentiles. I have spoken against the residue of the heathen. Come on, man. Brother Adam Nana, Psalms 53, verse 5. 
There were they in great fear, where no fear was, for the Most High hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because the Most High hath despised them. No, we love all nations, hath despised them. The Lord only loves Israel. So the other nations are going to be scattered and are going to be sold into captivity. Slaves. Psalms 53 or 6. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were cut out of Zion when the Most High bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. We just read salvation. The gathering back of the stones of the Lord's crown, his crown jewels. Wow. See? Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. We're going to get that. Let's go to Joel. They took down Jerusalem and sold his inheritance into slavery. They hate to talk about this, but it is the truth. Joel 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land against the Gentiles, against the residue of the heathen that sold his children, the children of Israel. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Look up the movie, Goodbye Uncle Tom. They turned the boys into lady boys. They sold our women and bartered with them like commodities and gave up our women for bottles of aged wine. You got to pay. All you heathen are going to be gathered into the Middle East. Yahweh Shaphat, which means Yahweh's judgment. Joel 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head. The native Africans sold us to the Edomites, the Grecians, sold us to the sons of Ishmael and to the Midianites, sold us to the nations, Moab, Ammon. So all you nations Look forward to captivity, judgment, fire, hardcore bondage. Brother Adam Nana, for we were bondmen, yet our power hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving to set up the house of our God and to repair the desolations thereof 
and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. So the Lord put a spirit on Cyrus under the Medo-Persian Empire to rebuild the temple that was sacked and taken down by the Babylonians. So now we're building a spiritual house, tabernacle, the lively stones of the house of the tabernacle of David. Kings are being raised up. Judges are being revived, revitalized with the breath of life, the spirit of the Lord, which starts with his wisdom, this doctrine. So war is being prepared against the heathen. I'm going to prove it. Joel 3 Verse 9, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. For the Most High is challenging you. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Pakistan, with your nuclear missiles, stand up. One third of Pakistan is underwater. China, Moab, stand up, experiencing a drought, famine. India, stand up with your nuclear missiles. Elam or Elam, Indian Pakistan, come on down into the valley of Yahweh Shaphat, Yahweh's judgment. Come on down into the valley. Joel 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Let the heathen be awakened. I thought the heathen are going to get salvation. Vocab, no class, Malone. The Lord is declaring war on them. Joel 3. Verse 12, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen that are round about. That's another cut, vocab. Your eyes are shut. Your lips are being swole. All right, you are bludgeoned, bloodied. So war is being declared against all nations outside of Israel. Let the heathen be awakened and let the weak say, I am strong. Brother Andre serving in Habashai, Revelations 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty power. So Yahweh Shai is coming with the backing of the Most High Father. All power, glory, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And the mighty or the excellency of his power. So he's coming back with the host of heaven. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. That's what Isaiah 63 is about, taking down Idumia, Edom. That's why he says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. So Edom has to be destroyed, their military, before Jacob or Jake can be delivered. Can't have one without the other. Edom is the head over the heathen, over the nations, over the Gentiles. See, let's go to Psalms 110, verse 5. A book of Psalms, chapter 110, verse 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. No, the heathen are going to be saved. He shall judge among 
the heathen, he shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. So the United Nations is following the head, the European Union, NATO, and America, the great red dragon, the beast. So the heathen are in bed, wandering after this woman, the daughter of Babylon. They marvel at her. Yep, Brother Andre serving in Havashai. All Idumia has a judgment against them. They're in charge. They are the chief executive officer of the daughter of Babylon, the land of gross darkness, wickedness, witchcraft. Brother Andre serving in Havashai, Isaiah 63, verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him? that traitor in the wine fat. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. So they're going to be stomped out. This is figurative speech, dark sayings, He's going to destroy the nations and their militaries. The United Nations flag, their military stronghold. All the armies spoken of in Isaiah chapter 34. Under Idumia, Edom, Andre serving in Habashai, Isaiah 63, verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeem is come. There is no redemption unless Edom is rendered combat ineffective, neutralized, militarily defeated, just like he destroyed Pharaoh's army. See, Surat 36, verse 10. Surat 36, verse 10. Smack and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. So the United Nations are happy ruling under Edom, the so-called white man, the European Union, NATO, the great red dragon. They love it. They get all types of incentives to push a rainbow agenda, to push women's liberation under Edomite supremacy. They're enjoying themselves being in bed with the beast, being spooned, spooned by this devil. Sirach 36, verse 1. Go to right back to verse 10. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning, the rebuilding of the Lord's house, which starts with the tabernacle of David, built on the chief cornerstone, the truth, the foundations of wisdom, Yahweh Shai. Surah 36, verse 12. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. Why do we keep reading the heathen are being smitten? They're militaries. The heathen are being judged, recompensed, and salvation is being delivered to the nation of Israel, the birth of the nation of the deliverance of Jacob. Sirach 36, verse 10. Smack and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. Let's go to Sirach 36, verse 1. Sirach 36. Let's go to verse 1. 
have mercy upon us, O Lord, God of all, and behold us. We read in context the tribes of Jacob, his temple. Surah 36, verse 2. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Judgment to the nations. Recompense unto the heathen. Mercy upon Jacob. Salvation and deliverance starting with the elect. Lively stones being rebuilt. Surah 36, verse 2. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. The Lord is going to be traveling in the greatness of his strength and power. The chariots of the Lord are coming in a formation, a military formation. The book of Habakkuk chapter 3 says he's going to invade them with his troops. He's going to show his power. The Lord is a man of war pursuant to Exodus 15 and 3. So he wants to flex his arm. He's manly, masculine. He wants to show forth his power so that his name may be feared and revered and exalted throughout all the earth when he brings forth his right arm and it reaches out his hand and saves his elect of Israel and smite the nations and their militaries under the UN. Surah 36, verse 3. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power, his might. So he's going to show great signs and wonders. What strange nations? The heathen, the Gentiles. Let's go to Psalms 144, verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 144, verse 11. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. So these heathen do things strange for a little bit of change. They're bugged out, perverted, wicked. So he's going to rid us from them, separate us from them especially these Edomites doing something strange for a little bit of change. Bugged out. Bugged out. Surah 36 and 3 again. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. Those chariots, there's a reason they stood up a UFO task force and a, watch, a watchman Council to report back to the Pentagon. Psalms 144, verse 11. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. They promote witchcraft, black magic, the occult. So their hand is built on false premises and false promises. Psalms 144 verse 12 that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. See? So the stones of the Lord are being gathered from where we've been scattered. So these stones are being compact together and building a holy place, a holy courtyard, and a temple, a place where Yahweh can dwell in the midst of us. The Lord is going to dwell in the midst of his temple, a holy place of worship. He is the chief high priest. So he wants a place that's sanctified. 
clean. So he's going to dwell amongst men. That's why the Bible says the tabernacle of the Lord is with men. The tabernacle of David is being raised up, sanctified, replenished, restored, and refinished, refined, a beautiful temple compacted of rubies, diamonds, precious jewels, fine stones, and gold, and silver being decked out for the Gabar Dhamma. Psalms 140, verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Who's the violent man? The caveman. Okay, the great red dragon. The beast. Esau, Edom is. Romans are not white, they're red. I can prove it. Young Simba. The young lion, the young lion Simba. Brother Sarai. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the Lord is going to dwell in a temple that's prepared for the chief high priest amongst the lively stones that have the breath of understanding. Wisdom. He's not going to dwell amongst thugs thugs, thots, and hooligans, or hoodlums, whatever you call them. He's going to dwell in a holy place amongst his elect. Not a bunch of hooligans. Let's go here. So the central theme, judgment, recompense to the heathen and Gentile nations. Mercy and salvation starting with the elect of Israel. See? Brother Ariah Ban Yehoudah, Revelations 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them, and be their power. So he's putting his man in place. Yahweh his right arm, and his hand of mercy and judgment. Perfect balance. A perfect judge. Let's go here. Sirach 39, verse 13. The book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 13. Keep in mind the overarching theme of the Bible. Recompense, judgment to the heathen and Gentile nations, salvation to Israel, and mercy. Sirach 39, verse 13. Hearken unto me, ye holy children, and bud forth as a rose growing by the brook of the field. Who's budding forth? The plants of the olive branches, the olive trees, the elect of Israel. See, let's go back. Psalms 144, verse 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Let's go back to Sirach 39, verse 13. Hearken unto me, ye holy children, and bud forth as a rose growing by the brook of the field. So the Lord's valley is being watered, the garden of Idon, the temple, and the kingdom is being rebuilt. We got to visualize this. Imagine a graveyard. You're starting to see Little buds coming up. Flowers are springing forth out of the, the graveyard, out of the dry ground. Waters of life is flooding the valley of the dry bones. Trees are springing forth. The elect 
trees of righteousness. Shalom, beloved king. GMS, Kansas City, Living Waters. Baratata, Malak. Ruth 2 and 12. The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. So the Lord's reward is righteous and just, rewarding the kingdom and salvation, mercy, and grace to the elect of Israel and recompensing the nations of the other, of the heathen. A perfect balance. So when Ruth was on the scene, she was used as a vessel to bring forth the righteous holy seed of the noble, regal house of David. So she is the great, great grandmother of King David that went through the line of Obed. More judgment to the heathen. See, let's go to Sirach. We're going to go back to Sirach 39 and 13. Hearken unto me, ye holy children, and bud forth as a rose growing by the brook of the field. His blessing covered the dry land as a river and watered it as a flood. So we're being flooded with truth, wisdom. Our bellies are flowing with life. We're being raised out of the dry ground. Remember when Moses split the rock, I think the place was Ored. Waters gushed out when we thought we were in a desert or a graveyard where we're going we're gonna to drop dead and die in place. The Lord makes a way out of no way. Sirach 39, verse 23. As he hath turned the waters into saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. Where is the mercy and judgment to the heathen? Now, are we going to have a remnant of heathen that remain? Yes, slaves, servants, handmaids, like Rehob was. Rehob. So, yes, there's going to be some left over. Remnants. To serve, not be delivered and ruled. Read it again. Surah 39, verse 23. As he hath turned the waters into saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. That's beautiful. Let's go to Surah 10 and 14. So the heathen are going to be taken down from their thrones, while simultaneously the thrones of the house of David are being stood up. The thrones of David. Surah 10, verse 14. A book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 14. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meat in their stead. Somebody post that scripture, please. The thrones of David, Psalms 122. See that? So the thrones of this great red dragon under the 13 Illuminati families, followed by the international leaders, the kings of the earth. So right now you have a makeshift kingdom. They're trying to replicate the house of David. They envy us. They hate us and fear us. See, Brother Adam Nana, Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. He's sitting on a chariot with fire emitting out of the bottom of it. 
So the thrones of the heathen are being cast down. Let's read it again. Brother Adam Nana, Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. He's got woolly hair. He looks like a so-called Negro man. The Most High, and pursuant to John chapter 14, Yahawashai looks like his father. But Israel is being rebuilt while the heathen and Gentile nations are being thrown down. They shall build, but I will throw down. Mount Seir, pursuant to Malachi 1 and 4. The earth is under the shadow of the valley of gross darkness, the Edomites. See, Brother Ariel Ban Yahweh, Psalms 122, verse 3. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Let's go to verse 5. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. So his kingdom is being rebuilt. While he's tearing down the kingdoms of the Gentiles, the heathen, under the Edomites, all of Idumea, See, let's go back to Sirach 10 and 14. The book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 14. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meat in their stead. Jacob shall inherit thrones of rulership. The tribes of Jacob. Sirach 10 and 15. The Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen. No salvation, heathen. No salvation. Salvation is rulership promised to the sons of Jacob, followed by the remnant of the hopeful elect, the kingdom of heaven. Let's read it again. Surah 10, verse 15. The Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. They shall build, but I will throw down. So this kingdom under Edom, the great red dragon, the United Nations under the European Union, NATO, and the great poor, the daughter of Babylon, is going to be thrown down. Who talks like that? Jake. The Most High is a Jake. Touch me if you want, and we're going to throw down. You can't make this stuff up. The Most High is a Jake with woolly hair. Man, the Lord... Surah 10 and 16, the Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away and destroyed them and had made their memorial to cease from the earth. So they're going to be as nothing and like they have never been. See? So Isaiah chapter 40 Verses 15 through 17 says that the nations are as nothing but are like as a drop that falleth from a vessel. They're like little raindrops, insignificant, or really more specific, they're like little mist drops. How many have ever felt little mist drops, fine mist that might the wind might blow on you? Nothing. Let's close out here. 
judgment and recompense to the heathen and Gentile nations, salvation and mercy and redemption to usher in the deliverance of the birth of the nation of Jacob. Revelations 14, verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So the gospel have to be preached into all the world because Israelites are scattered into all nations. These angels are prophets. How do we know that? Look up 2nd Ezra's chapter 1, verse 39 on down. The prophets are called angels of the Lord that are prophesying the downfall and the destruction of this pedo queendom, the daughter of Babylon. It has to be preached into all the world across the world wide web so that the elect may be sealed. That way it can set the conditions for Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation, he's going to gather his elect. That's the Israelites, the 12 tribes. Revelations 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, America, and then across the world wide web. Revelation 14, verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear the most high and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Worship the Most High and Yahweh Shai. Revelations 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So all nations are marked for judgment. They drink of the cup of the Lord's fury, which lines up with what? Jeremiah 51, verse 5 through 7. See? Revelations 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. So the nations are going to be smitten. He's going to invade them with his troops pursuant to the book of Habakkuk, somewhere around verse 18. They're going to be smitten with high energy, concentrated laser beam fire. They showed us in the movie, War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. When the chariots of the Lord cracked those skies. See? Let's get one more. He's going to rule them with a rod of iron. See? Revelations 2, verse 25. But that which ye have, Revelations 2 and 25. Yeah, this is the real Independence Day. The birth or the deliverance of the nation of Jacob. The book of Revelations chapter 2, verse 25. But that which he had already, hold fast till I come. This gospel. Revelations 2 and 26. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. That slavery vocab alone. Power over the nations. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. 
as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. So the sons of Jacob are joint heirs, joint inheritors of the Lord's holy mountain, his real estate. The earth was made for our sake. So the Lord is going to set up property managers, kings and priests of the sons of Jacob under Yahushai. See, they're going to be smitten, hardcore slavery. They're going to be ruled over with a rod of iron. Let's go back to Judith 16 and 17. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. The Lord Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment in putting fire and worms in their flesh and they shall fill them and weep forever. Yeah, it applied to the ancient Assyrians, but they're back. All nations, peoples, multitudes, and tongues are back awaiting judgment, recompense and judgment to the heathen and Gentile nations and the deconstruction of their kingdom, their global enterprise, their worldwide web network is being brought down pursuant to Isaiah 63. He said, I'm going to cast their strength down to the ground. Literally, their rulership, their satellites, their space station, and figuratively, they're being cast down from heaven. And one of the definitions of heaven is rulership. And I'm smoked. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close there. Let's read this one about a young lion, the young king, young Simba, Brother Sarad, Malachi 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So entire generations of the heathen are going to be smitten, destroyed, but a small remnant are going to be salvaged to be slaves. So it's okay to use salvage for the remnant of heathen that are going to be taken as a possession. So when they're salvaged, they're just preserved for our utility, our use, to serve the house of David, to serve the kings. Yep, Brother Adam Nana, Romans 8 and 17. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Become radiant rays of light, lively stones of the new Jerusalem, a new name, a new holy, everlasting kingdom, being rebuilt as immortals and made perfect endowed with the pure spirit of power from the most high, sent from on high. The tabernacles of David are being raised up. Woe to the nations that spoiled Israel and destroyed the Lord's temple because the day of the vengeance of the Lord's temple is drawing near. Pan Yasharala, Pan Yasharala, we got next. Lord willing. Shabbat Shalom. Tabernacles of David is being raised up. Shalom. We got next. 
Lord willing, Shalom.